So yeah, perfect. So uh, let's start. Uh, thank you um, for, for joining this event. So we are the uh, first time uh, providing uh, such an event and uh, our goal is to start uh, uh, start making uh, some uh, public uh, discussions regarding uh, safety of electric vehicles in terms of uh, uh, in terms of sound of electric vehicles in terms of regulation uh, uh, not only cars but also micro mobility electric vehicles so to today we're gonna just share i, I hope uh, with a non-formal uh, discussion um, regarding your thoughts and ideas how can we work uh, uh, what's the challenge uh, with the current regulations uh, with the uh, AVAS system, acoustic vehicle alert system? So, Alana, could you please represent our speakers? Uh, yes, sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Mersh Janot, if I say it in the right way, <laughs> so he's the president, um, oh, yes, uh, former president of European Federation of Road Traffic Victims. Um, Mr. Sergei uh, Burgazliev. Burgazliev. Uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Burgas in Bulgaria. <laughs> really uh, like this. So uh, he has a 15 years experience in automotive business and consulting. And then maybe you could uh, also say uh, much more words about your uh, uh, experience. Uh, so we have also uh, Miss. Uh, Anik uh, Reutling, if I say it correct. Uh, she is the representative of uh, LEFA uh, EU um, company. So uh, let's start. Um, uh, yeah, there is also uh, Mr. Remy Fadel, who is a, um, a partner of uh, Mr. Thierry James, uh, the president of the Accessibility Commission of the CFCA and the Vice President of the Federation of the Blind of France. So we have uh, uh, so many uh, great speakers here. <laughs> so Raman, please continue. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So, and uh, we represent a company called Tor, is a, a private company which is working since 2018. Uh, we start producing our solution for um, diesel cars uh, with uh, like uh, like tuning accessoire for um, issuing uh, for um, sound uh, uh, for additional sound for diesel cars. And since this year, we uh, um, we start uh, working on uh, electric vehicles and uh, producing a new solution uh, with the main focus on safety. So and uh, Today it's uh, it's just a discussion, and we want to start with the with the market trends and regulation. Um, I hope you know the current regulation of electric vehicles uh, in terms of sound in the uh, European Union. It's a uh, one thirty eight regulation, and uh, since uh, July this year, it's obligatory to have uh, to emission to emission some sound up to 25 kilometers per hour uh, to uh, uh, allow people and other drivers to recognize this car. So, and uh, if, you, uh, if, you, if you know, uh, AXA Insurance reported uh, last year, as far as I know, that they um, have some problems with electric vehicles. They said that uh, uh, electric cars uh, are Get in accidents uh, more often, forty times, forty percent uh, often than um, classic uh, engine types cars. Uh, in the, uh, the and uh, the problem is in acceleration. So, uh, because current regulation is only covering uh, the speed limits up to twenty five kilometers per hour, but most of the accidents happens you know, like on you know, seventy, ninety, and so on. And the second reason that most of the new cars coming this year, last year, next year, uh, super fast cars, like three seconds to 100 kilometers is like uh, new normal, new standard for the market. Uh, Porsche Taycan, uh, I don't know, uh, many other new cars. And uh, so this is a super problem, especially for blind people, uh, for elderly persons. And uh, we, uh, with, the, with the theory, with the Remy, 
uh, we are uh, working on uh, making some tests in France in September uh, with a group of uh, blind people to uh, to help uh, such a group of people to improve such regulation. So, and uh, I just want to know, uh, maybe you have some news or ideas regarding these regulations. Did you met some problems uh, or maybe you know some another groups of uh, vulnerable people who um who are, who has uh, problems with the with the uh with such electric vehicles uh, who wants to share your thoughts just please feel free yeah yeah janet yeah oh. yes i'm uh, living currently in luxembourg i'm luxembourg we have not so many um, electrical vehicles for the moment um but I know, of course, uh, about the dangers for, for vulnerable road users, as we call uh, pedestrians, and especially elderly uh, pedestrians. I'm uh, 70 plus, so I can count with <laughs> uh, young elderly with hearing problems, but also um, people with uh, blind people with uh, impaired uh, seeing. Uh, that's a big problem. And uh, also, as you already mentioned, it's up to 25 kilometers an hour where uh, the speed, the sound has to be. Um, to be uh, heard, a special sound. I just watched a, a video about a uh, Renault uh, electric car. Really, you can hear it when it's going faster, that it gets more, the sound gets higher. But then, of course, uh, as when you're going much faster, the dangers are bigger. We all know for pedestrians between, for example, 30 kilometers or 50 kilometers an hour, it's really a, a big. Uh, um, uh, this curve indicates that yeah. you can die or, or seriously injured, and especially elderly uh, who get hit uh, by, by a car. Uh, so it's uh, more or less uh, the, the group of the elderly pedestrians uh, that we should um, look at, at, at them, because we are also supposed to have more elderly people. We are living longer, we want to be active longer. Uh, I think my, my own case, I want to, to, to walk a lot also in cities, and so uh, I, I was also some years ago in touch with guide dogs, that's an, an English association of, of blind people, maybe that's the same that Remy um, has, has in France. Uh, and so it's important also that we consult these people who are concerned, because often in planning, if you don't consult the people who are not, con if you don't consult the people who are concerned, you do wrong uh, decisions. I had one good example, we had once uh, for people in wheelchairs to, to look at accessibility. And then we put everybody in a wheelchair to see how they can access even the bancomat, how they can access the door. And then you see the real uh, problems. And so that's, that's great that you have also Remy Fadel uh, here uh, also who can speak about his uh, experiences. And uh, I think um, uh, I know a little bit because we are also a member of the UNECE of the WP1 um, working group at Geneva. We don't attend all the, the meetings because it's very expensive, but I know there's a regulation now that all the new cars have to have this feature. And as you say, the problems, they, they start after <laughs> when you, you go faster and, and uh, we all want to drive fast cars. Of course, in urban areas, maybe fast cars are not so much needed because uh, we, uh, as our federation, where I'm now the, the past president, we had an, an activity about 30 kilometers um, speed limit in, 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 in towns, which would be the best uh, to limit also the damages to, to, to uh, pedestrians and cyclists. So that's the first um, a statement that I wanted to, 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 to give. Uh, exactly. This sure. Thank you, thank you, Janet. Uh, Sergey, do you have some thoughts about that? Uh, what do you think that uh, is this a, is this a super problem in, in your location, or um, how do you think uh, should we solve such problem? Uh, so, if you're speaking about Russia, for Russia, it's not a problem yet because we have very limited size of the market. I mean, the electric vehicles <coughs> market, we have only uh, 1,600, 1,700 cars per year. Uh, so it's passengers car, most of all, uh, and half of this is the used car. So uh, of course we, we cannot uh, compete with, with European countries, with China, with USA. But um, 
Yeah, I think uh, in some time, maybe next uh, couple of years, uh, we will get uh, some, um, how to say, some additional car, electric cars on the roads, especially in the big cities like Moscow, St. Petersburg, Kazan, uh, Nizhny Novgorod and other big cities uh, with population up to 1 million people. And uh, as I know, the story about uh, sounds of the car is uh, uh, coming back from, from the Jaguar I-Pace. And because the I-Pace model, it's uh, almost a uh, uh, car without any sound. And uh, the engineers mm. of GLR, they trying to, to solve this problem to uh, develop some sounds based on uh, AVAS system. And they choosing many sounds uh, and uh, the, the sound which uh, had been chosen, uh, it was a sound like a like a starship uh, from from the Star Wars uh, movie, but uh, it was not very very good solution for from as for users uh, as for the pedestrians and other uh, participants of the, of the moving uh, on the road on pedestrian, and uh, they they trying to to reach another solution, and uh, one more thing which is. Uh, also important for the customers when the customer not only feel the acceleration of the car, uh, especially about uh, car which you mentioned before, so super super uh, fast cars like Taycan, like maybe another another like Zender and another supercars, the customer is much more satisfied if he uh, hear the sound of acceleration. So um, I need to say that th this problem is actually coming from Formula One races because they when they have the uh, v, uh, V10 or V8 engine, uh, it sounds like a, like a, like a horn, uh, but when the ecology standard is uh, pushing all OEMs to, to be more green, to be more close to, to, to the uh, clean air, to the earth, uh, to the nature, and they use some recuperation system, but the, uh, and engine uh, size uh, has been decreased, uh, to uh, two liters and only uh, four cylinders. And that's why the sound of the Formula One car 10 years ago and sound of the Formula One car now, it's absolutely different. And many, many fans of Formula One uh, was uh, very upset. So give back the sound from, from, from the gold era of Formula One. Mm. And um, yes, yeah, same story in the streets because yeah, if a pedestrian has some uh, limits like blind people, like uh, people in, in the rolling chair. Uh, of course, they should not only see if, if some of them could see something, but they should hear clear that the moving of the car or uh, when the car is turning or when the car is coming out. And it's, it, it would be a problem as well in Russia as well when we have much more electric vehicles. So as I know, uh, in Japan, it's very interesting solution because uh, in Japan, based on the laws and regulation, it's not possible to use any, any sounds like uh, uh, sounds of animals, sounds of the rain, signs of uh, um, autumn leaves, like And that's why I think each country should investigate this itself based on the cultural difference, based on the, uh, some specific of the road, because for example, the road surface in Russia and the road surface in Japan, it's absolutely another story. And yeah, it's an interesting topic and uh, I think it would be very, very interesting to see to which way this story uh, will be developed. Yeah, thank you. And uh, just, do, did you know, uh, do you know, um, colleagues, uh, the new um, uh, regulation, not regulation, new idea of um, TLF London about that? Um, so uh, I can show you some short video after Anik. Anik, so you're welcome. Thank you. Um, I'd like I'd like to add something to the discussion. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not in the car business. Uh, we leave at you is the trade association for what we call light electric vehicles, which is anything starting from little e-scooters to electric bikes, electric mopeds, motorcycles, up to elect light electric vehicles with three, four wheels. But I, I would like to say something um, about um, transport in the European Union 
um, because that's where I live and that's what I know. And I think when you consider the sound issue, it is important to take a number of things into consideration. First of all, I think in general, generally, very broadly speaking, the infrastructure, road infrastructure in Europe is kind of split up between um, urban areas where there's really um, more and more limitations to 30 kilometers an hour. And I think that that is going to continue that more and more cities are going to continue to um, implement a 30 kilometer an hour uh, limit. When you have 30 kilometer an hour speed limit, that means that the speed of the car becomes comparable to the speed of, for instance, bicycles, electric bicycles, and so on. And therefore you do not need um, um, separate cycle, cycle paths and you could use um, mixed traffic. So that's really an important issue to take into account when you're thinking about should the car make a noise? And if so, what, what kind of noise should that be? And then from there you go to um, limits of 50 kilometers an hour, 70 kilometers an hour, up to the speed limits on the motorways. And that completely changes the infrastructure because there, there's still a very clear division between the space for the cars and the space for pedestrians, cyclists, and so on. You will have separate cycle paths. You will have a lot more um, traffic lights and so on. So I think that really makes an important difference. Secondly, I would like to um, explain that in Europe, there is a growing number of cities um, who are completely banning cars, not only petrol cars, but also electric cars, because um, they feel that these cars are not, uh, are taking up a lot of space, are making the city unsafe. I myself, I live in a Belgian city where I think in 2013 already, they have made the whole, almost the whole city car free. So that's also um, an, an issue to take into account. And one of the things when they make cities car free, what people appreciate is the fact that there's no noise from traffic. Um, so you kind of, if you're thinking about introducing a sound for electric cars, will have to mitigate that issue, the fact that people really are happy that there is no noise and then to reintroduce some kind of noise. And the third point I would like to raise is um, the fact that noise, um, and I mean noise, not sound, noise is really an issue which should not be underestimated because there were reports from the World Health Organization which shows that there were quite a, a, an, an important number of uh, premature deaths which can be attributed to noise coming from transport. So it's also important to consider um, sound for electric vehicles, electric cars, in the framework um, of that issue. That Thank is you. I want to yeah. yeah, we uh, definitely agree with that. Um, and regarding uh, noise, uh, Transport for London uh, published uh, one uh, video uh, one week ago. Uh, I want to share with you, just if let me know if you see that. <clears throat> Oops. Did you see it? Aliona? Mm. No, we cannot. Oh, black, Roman and black screen. Black screen. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Just we only can see that Roman had to start. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, now it, it's working. No. Yeah, perfect. So uh, I hope that sound uh, will be with uh, no sound. You didn't hear any sound. No. Okay. Also. So uh, this is um, just uh, how to. Alon, could you share this video? Maybe because I have some issues with my laptop. Uh, yes, um, I'll share it in the chat, right? No, 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 no. Uh, share it on the screen uh, because I want uh, everyone to 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 see, to hear the uh, the new uh, rule, new idea of uh, London 
uh, transportation. Could you send us a link, please? So maybe you can share with us the link of this video. Yeah, yeah, as well. If I can say some and add uh, different points to this uh, uh, debate, first to say that uh, Thierry is here with me and uh, say hello to all first. Uh, secondly, you ask uh, if there are some uh, uh, other publics to be concerned by the by the sun and maybe the, the children uh, can be considered as a, a public uh, which can uh, benefit of that kind of advantage uh, uh, to her, that kind of, uh, of uh, dangerous vehicle arriving while they have been uh, uh, going on uh, the, the streets. So maybe it can be interesting to, to, to focus on them also. Uh, you told already about the scooters and uh, different uh, uh, kind of uh, small vehicles, which are also uh, non-herb, uh, if they don't have that kind of, uh, of sound uh, equipment. So uh, this is a, a, another uh, issue to, to, to keep in mind. And, and last point is uh, uh, to be sure uh, that the sun will uh, come from the front grille of the vehicles. Uh, this is uh, also a point uh, which uh, can make the difference for us. So maybe we can have a, a, a little talk about this, but for us, it's important to uh, be sure that uh, each uh, silent vehicle will, uh, will get the sun coming from uh, the front grille. That's it for me, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, and Thierry, Remy. So, unfortunately, the sound uh, is off. Um, so the idea of this video is to show you that uh, City of London uh, initiated a new program uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the sound. Uh, he, uh, they promised. Uh, they, they stated that sound should be not uh, not only safe, but uh, also beautiful and brand. So um, they're producing some uh, standards of sound. And they want to be unique for only London. So so and uh, they want that all electric vehicles should uh, produce some sound uh, like unique only for London. And uh, they understood that uh, they don't want to um, have uh, the, no uh, the noise uh, uh, streets uh, due to uh, traffic jams and so on. Uh, but uh, in opposite side, they don't want to have uh, silent cars. So, and that's why it should be smart uh, sound. It should be on, because dependent on the environment sound as we plan to do in, in, uh, with, with the, with the Tuary in France. So, and uh, London uh, initiated the idea that uh, um, sound, it could be uh, not only uh, safe, uh, and uh, I think you, you'll see this video and uh, would be uh, impressed about uh, that the city of London, one of the first who think about that. Okay, so, and uh, regarding market solutions, uh, just a uh, short notice about that. Uh, we see that first we need to, we understood that uh, the trend is uh, mass adoption of electric vehicles and the problem uh, with the silent electric cars in opposite size, we don't want to hear the same, the same sound uh, as uh, petroleum cars. And uh, uh, many uh, corporates uh, transforming their corporate fleet to electric vehicles. And we expect um, during the next decade, uh, like super mass adoption of electric vehicles. So, so such a problem will be, uh, will be growing. Uh, and uh, the second uh, uh, issue uh, with the electric micro, micro electric, uh, micro mobility, for example, in Russia, 
there are some um, big uh, uh, issues with uh, electric scooters on the streets. Uh, they have some um, death uh, problems with that. And uh, after that, uh, St. Petersburg city closed all um, operators of electric scooters for several days and uh, initiated that policy department should be responsible for uh, regulation of electric scooters. First, uh, they need to get a, a Hamlet. Uh, second, uh, they cannot use it on the crowded streets uh, and uh, there are no restrictions on sound, just only uh, Hamlet and, uh, and uh, fines <laughs> for, uh, for this. So and, and uh, they should have the license uh, to drive the, the scooters. Yeah, it's it's not uh, helpful for such business uh, because this business uh, is a non-profit for first uh, uh, two years. And uh, as far as I know, France is uh, is the first country in the European Union who uh, implemented electric scooters. Uh, so I was in, in Paris in 2019 and it was a huge amount of electric scooters and electric, electric mopeds. And uh, I just want to ask Remy, Terry, uh, uh, what's, what's the problem you see with, the, with such electric mopeds, scooters, and how Paris solve uh, such, uh, such problems? Yeah, you're right. Uh, here in Paris, uh, uh, since uh, quite a, a lot of time, uh, they, they used to, to have that kind of uh, silent scooter all around the, the capital. And, uh, the first big problem we have is um, that uh, the drivers of these uh, scooters are the same drivers of the vehicles and the same drivers are of the, the bike also, uh, meaning that uh, if they can, uh, so they will go on the, the pass and they will uh, drive uh, on the area of the, of the pedestrian. And so, uh, you can uh, see this uh, as a, an, um, a, 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 some kind of incivilities, but uh, the French uh, people uh, have to live with that kind of uh, abuse. And so for blind people, as you can uh, clearly understand, uh, this is uh, very difficult to, 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 to have to work on the uh, uh, normally securized uh, uh, area and, uh, and you cannot uh, anticipate and hear that uh, there are uh, silent uh, vehicles uh, going on around you. And uh, it's uh, really, really uh, complicated to, to, to get focus and, and work. And so we have a lot of uh, 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 blind people around uh, us uh, to stay at home because they fear to get mm. out uh, to, to, to manage their own life uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in security because of that kind of abuse of uh, using, uh, which are uh, one of the good idea to, to, to continue the way of uh, 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 the um, sustainable development and uh, and going on an ecologic way, okay. But uh, we asked for to the to the mayor of the city to to impose a kind of uh, chart to to set there some uh, rules to those uh, societies who propose to the the, the citizens to use that kind of uh, scooter, silent scooters and so on, to be sure that uh, uh, if uh, they do not respect that kind of uh, pedestrian area, so they will have a, uh, they will have a sanction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that the most vulnerable group uh, of drivers is uh, drivers of electric mopeds. Uh, because um, they have uh, more higher speeds than electric scooters, um, electric mopeds like city scoot in Paris, and uh, they have no um, protected uh, shield around uh, them, 
yeah and, yeah uh, and uh, they have like more damages if they have some accidents yes, with, of course, uh, with of electric course. cars uh, for example uh, we have a case in cyprus uh, we start a pilot with a Cyprus uh, electric moped operator and uh, he, uh, Seo and founder, told us that uh, lots of cases with the accidents uh, of electric scooters with, uh, with the cars, uh, car, uh, for example, um, um, change his direction, not like going to the right and uh, can't uh, identify that uh, electric scooter behind him is coming. And uh, that's why uh, this is a problem in Cyprus, for example. I don't know what's happening in Paris about that, uh, because uh, you have City Scoot, you have another company uh, working in Paris. Uh, it maybe it's not so popular, and uh, maybe you have like low low uh, speeds, like speed limits about that. Mm. So and uh, yes, the solution yes. uh, uh, on this point, yeah. you have to know that uh -huh. the mayor of Paris. Uh, want to 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 have the the, the speed uh, uh, limited at uh, thirty uh, kilometers for hour. electric uh, mopeds for all for, for all, all device for all uh, uh, vehicles. Yeah, because electric scooters are going uh, like with the when people uh, <laughs> walking so yeah. they they should limit up to 15 kilometers per hour as uh, berlin uh, done as okay. far as i know because berlin have uh, the most strongest uh, restrictions for electric scooters and regarding mopeds uh, they're going on the roads so they have uh, different limits 30 i think is okay but uh, unfortunately this is only one uh, leverage uh, how to control this so uh, there are no I, regulation, there are no ideas how to fix it. And uh, I think that uh, such research and uh, um, such events like us, uh, like our help uh, mayors and, and city of transports to understand the issues and problems of that. So, and uh, do you have some um, ideas regarding uh, another market solutions, how should we solve it? Because uh, um, if you know that uh, American law, U US law about uh, electric scooters, uh, uh, electric cars, sorry, are based on European regulation 138, uh, as well as China regulation of electric vehicles, uh, almost the same as uh, European have. Uh, so I think that if Europe uh, changes, improves such regulations, uh, most of the countries uh, follow uh, this regulation. So, and uh, I think uh, our ideas, our research, uh, playing a key role in that. Um, what do you think uh, about uh, how should we solve it? Uh, should we uh, make some tests with the governments, or should we make our own tests? Because for business is a is a non profit. Uh, activity and who should finance, who should fund uh, such activities. Um, and Janet, maybe you have some ideas about that? Yeah, from my experience, it's often a public-private uh, partnership who uh, gives the best uh, results. So if you have people from the industry and also governments to um, make uh, these partnerships, was the European Commission. Um, there, there's the DG Growth, which uh, cares about um, vehicle uh, regulations. They just also have issued these um, safety regulations where it's also about um, speed limit limiters in cars, um, 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 about uh, event data recorders in cars. So the, the, the DG Growth who uh, should also, I think they are also um, reflecting how to regulate this on the European level, because that's, uh, the best because if every country has its own uh, regulations and we travel a lot so if you go to an other country for example if you have an e-scooter in paris it's different um, uh, than an e-scooter in luxembourg i think in both countries you're not allowed to drive on food pass and that's also in, in germany is the case i follow a lot uh, as, as uh, our neighboring countries as i speak also german and, and french and uh, i know for example in brussels the e-scooters because they have very large food pass 
So they go, they are allowed in the full pass. And I think there are not so many uh, collisions. Uh, of course, if uh, this is also uh, to, to remark to Annick, if uh, an escort is coming from behind and if they don't give a uh, signal, uh, then people cannot tell them. I know one case in Paris where a piano player, she was hit by an e-scooter, she broke her arm and now she cannot uh, um, work uh, anymore. And uh, uh, I'm also in an adversary board for the safety of, a, of an e-scooter provider. There we, uh, uh, we say that it's important that the scooter say rings a bell uh, so that people can see that the same also for cyclists. Uh, uh, so that people can hear that they are coming to have no, no conflicts. But I think what was said also, I think it was Remy, who said this, that, no, Annick, it was Annick to separate. If we have 30 kilometers an hour, all the different uh, mobility modes can share the, the space. Uh, but if, if uh, it's above 30 kilometers an hour, there, of course, it's, um, uh, we need separate uh, cycle tracks and also regulations and these regulations they're always the best if they are harmonized through Europe and then we can also look to the US or to, to Asia uh, through the UNECE uh, regulations uh, because, uh, but I know it's a long process to have already in Europe to have a unique uh, harmonization uh, and also to find uh, partnerships, uh, but it is an important issue and I think that we will have more electric vehicles in the future, especially in urban areas, this is a safety problem. So it's important that, um, and, and one remark that, that I thought before, I, I was a sound engineer, diploma sound engineer during my professional life. Uh -huh. I know a lot about uh, sounds, about music, I'm also an amateur musician. There are different levels of sound also. I live here in a village. There you don't hear so much noise of cars, but in Luxembourg City, for example, it's very noisy. Exactly. And then there are cars who yeah. make more noise. And depending on the background level, your, um, your hearing ability, uh, depends on this uh, and so uh, it, it's it uh, if there are less noise from vehicles i think the dangers are all, also less that they are masked or, or other noises from from industry uh, because they can mask also and if it's a very quiet quiet environment that is uh, also more easy to, uh, that you can hear when uh, the, the scooter or an electric vehicle are approaching uh, uh, instead if, if it's a very noisy uh, background that, that that's a uh, physical uh, thing that i know uh, very well mm -hmm. yeah thank you janet regarding yeah. different frequencies uh, in different levels just a quick re quick um, note we talked with the, one of the largest electric buses producer in the uk and they said that uh, they're producing uh, a bus uh, system which depends on um and depends on uh, environment. For example, in the city center, like more high levels of sound in the village, uh, like um, most, like uh, another way. And uh, it depends on uh, hours. For example, they uh, split uh, all day on three periods. Like in the night, there are like uh, less sound, uh, uh, like peak hours uh, higher and uh, average uh, in the rest of the time. Uh, but uh, in tour of us, we actually said that, uh, hey, guys, we should uh, make, uh, uh, we should add additional parameters, depends on uh, physical location, depends on GPS data, because we understand that the city center is also different uh, sounds, we should and identify uh, different frequencies and uh, adapt it uh, to allow people to recognize it, it should be more smart. Um, yeah, this is my note. Anik, please. Sorry, I was uh, looking for my mute on mute. Yes, I, no. I would like to um, um, add something to um, what um, Janu has said with reference to light electric vehicles and particularly uh, e-scooters. It must be taken in, into account that um, for the moment, the European technical legislation for light electric vehicles is very bad. Some of them are classified like e-scooters as uh, machines and others are in the L category under the same regime as uh, mopeds, motorcycles. None of these systems are working because they haven't been designed for light electric vehicles and it's one of our priorities um, to, to try and convince the European Commission and Parliament and Council to have uh, harmonized legislation, but it obviously will take a long time. 
as I said, e-scooters, for instance, are categorized as machines. So there are no specific requirements in the machinery directive with reference to a bell or whatever. And this allows member states to do what they like and to have their own legislation, which, and they are using this opportunity. And we find this a very bad, uh, very bad development and we're working against it. We have had a major um, step forwards when the commission has recently decided to exclude all vehicles from the machinery directive, which we hope, and we're talking to the commission about this, opens the road for having harmonized legislation for vehicles which are currently under the machinery directive. Saying that for them being in the L category is not necessarily a guarantee that you'll have a good solution for the sound. We have the case with speed pedelecs, which are electric bikes with assistance up to 45 kilometers an hour. And the speed pedal legs, they have to have the same um, sound as a, a conventional moped. And we know we have done research ourselves. We know that the users really do not like this very loud horn on this speed pedal leg uh, because it kind of scares whenever they use it, it scares the, the other road users and it creates actually, instead of safety, it creates dangerous situations. So a lot of speed pedal leg users are uh, their own on their own decision are just putting normal bicycle bells in their vehicles because they seem to be more effective. So uh, what I want to say is that I absolutely agree that we need harmonized legislation, but unfortunately the awareness in European institutions with reference to light electric vehicles is not there yet to understand uh, how that legislation should be established and how it should look like. But we are working on it. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, not a, an easy way, but we uh, try to do our best. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, uh, do we should we want to discuss something else? Uh, we talked about market trends, regulations, challenge in the market. Uh, so regarding market solutions, I can add uh, today we gonna the, the following situation. Uh, most of the uh, largest automotive companies who produce electric cars are working with uh, companies with with the with another uh, many years old companies who produce uh, initially um, exhaust system for um, their cars. And now they do like a very basic piezoelectronic based, um, uh, like like you if you if you remember Nokia 33, 3310, uh, which produced sounds like peak peak. So this is the basic uh, sound solutions we have on the market, which uh, uh, some such companies like BMW, Volkswagen, and other large uh, automotive are used right now because of um, no obligations to use another one. So, and uh, in this case, uh, of course, uh, if you want to work with uh, such automotive companies, first we should uh, initiate some working group, initiate some uh, discussions uh, that it's not working. But unfortunately, it takes some time to show statistics. Uh, unfortunately, it takes some people lives to show such statistics but i hope uh, our research on small groups in paris can allow uh, regulations to understood uh, to understand such problems so alona could you represent our colleague or our another speaker sergey ivanov uh, okay it's uh, sergey ivanov is uh, one of uh, the editors of uh, inside eves.ru from uh, a Russian edition of InsideDeeps.com. <laughs> Hi, Sergey. Hi. Welcome to our webinar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you have some words to say, please, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, just, uh, I just want to say sorry because uh, I've just uh, entered my country house uh, after living in Siberia this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I'm just here to listen for, for, for the beginning and maybe mm -hmm. just ask some question and so on. 
Thank yeah. you. Yeah. We uh, unfortunately we um, uh, we are closing. Uh, I think uh, we just uh, discussing the last topic regarding uh, potential solutions on the market and. Uh, um, unfortunately, there are no modern solutions on the market, and uh, Toravas uh, could be one, one of the latest technologies to show such solutions. So, uh, Remy, do you have some thoughts you want to add? Uh, yes, just uh, one point maybe can uh, can be interesting. Um, of course, we we can wait for the city to be quiet, but. Uh, uh, what will be complicated to manage in uh, is the, the the transition period during which uh, there will still be noisy petrol vehicles and it uh, may last for a long time and that means uh, more accidents to come so the transition period uh, that will be uh, dangerous for us yeah so, uh, you know, this uh, new regulation comes uh, in the European Union, it's uh, fit for 55, it's a climate action uh, regulation, uh, like uh, strange in, uh, making uh, more carbon neutrality of uh, corporates. So, and I think uh, one of the market solutions could be like to add some credits, uh, green credits for Avast systems. So if you use advanced Avast system, you get uh, uh, like uh, greenhouse credits. It's allow you to make uh, uh, more green uh, car because it's not only green in terms of uh, CO2 emissions, but also green in terms of safety for another drivers and other pedestrians. I think if we can implement such solution, it allows corporates to uh, actively use uh, of our systems and uh, to invest in uh, research and development in us. Did you hear some something about uh, ecological credits? Um, if you know that companies needs to uh, committed to be carbon neutrality by 2030, by 2050, and, and I think uh, such a uh, Credits allow companies to to reach that. Yeah. So uh, I think J Janet, you you have you want to add something? Yes, uh, I uh, can speak for, for Luxembourg, but that's for individuals. When you buy an electric mm -hmm. car, you get eight thousand euros from the government and even for electrical bike, I think it's now about 2000 euros to have more uh, people uh, changing to, to electrical cars. And something what I forgot also to mention, the shared space problem. You know, probably all the shared space sets where all the, the cars, the bicycles, the pedestrians can share the road. And there we, we experience also a lot of difficulties with uh, electrical vehicles. And we are now, uh, many municipalities are now going to to install shared space. And I think that's also something where we should um, have an eye on because this uh, creates many conflicts. Um, uh, but but uh, as I said at the beginning, Luxembourg, we have not, um, we are, I think the biggest um, per, per, per habitants, uh, the highest um, car owner uh, ship in, in Luxembourg from, from all of Europe. Uh, everybody owns two or three cars and, and maybe uh, if, if you don't need a big car, if you can buy a, a small electrical car, which is also ecological. And that's why our government say it gives this um, uh, subventions for, for uh, if you buy an electrical car or an electrical um, bicycle. But, but so, uh, so, 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 I don't know if, if they get, but I think there are some companies also who get from the government, from, from Luxembourg, who are, who are established in Luxembourg, of course, who get funds from the government if they work uh, on these issues. Uh, that, that's also the case here. What do, how, how, what do you think? Is it possible to fund uh, such advanced our systems for, for example, in Belgium? Uh, for example, is it possible in government of Belgium to uh, support uh, uh, people who buy electric vehicles to install such advanced device system and to refund uh, 
for example, 100 euro, because it's cost, it could be uh, cost like 100, 150 euro. I think this is a small amount which uh, allow Belgium could be more safety for people. That was a question for Annick, I suppose, no? because she's in, in Belgium. Yeah, the, 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 that was a question to Annick, but Annick, unfortunately, Annick, uh, is, just uh, have to leave uh, the webinar. She has a next meeting. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, hands from uh, Sergei. Yeah. Uh, um, my my question is uh, to you guys, to both of you. So as we know that uh, we have a two ways of uh, such system like AWS development. So first of all, it's OEM is uh, producing their exhaust system themselves. Or the second way, uh, they use some uh, suppliers like uh, ESSO, Bosa, Lebespecher, and another one. So what do you think yourself? Uh, to which way uh, this um, competition should be developed? So are you going to work with the uh, manufacturers of exhaust system, our intake, our outtake, or uh, it's better to you to work with uh, OEMs like GLR, uh, Stellantis, uh, VAG, and, and so. So what, what, what's your support? Mm -hmm. Because from my side, uh, I even based on my experience, I, uh, I cannot indicate right now that the best solution because of course OEMs are interested in this story because uh, it's um, how to say new uh, competitors, uh, uh, new uh, advantages in, in, in the customer's view. Uh, but another one, of course, uh, the, the big the big guys like ESSO, Bosel, they are also trying to to do something because uh, there is no uh, air intake and air outtake uh, in the exhaust system because there is no exhaust system in electrical cars. <laughs> So there, there are two ways. Thank you. This is a good question. Two ways to work. Uh, right now, we have only uh, sales to uh, physical customers of such solution uh, because it's very complex to to start working with uh, such uh, automotive guys like BMW and so on, and uh, many um, uh, distributors uh, don't want to take it because uh, they don't need it. Uh, because uh, automotive uh, don't need it because uh, it's not uh, obliged to have it. Uh, it's obliged to have a simple one like uh, which which costs uh, 25, uh, 50 euro. So it's enough for companies. And uh, I was wondered that uh, BMW use uh, not Owen Avast system but use uh, a system from Berspecher and other companies. And uh, I think uh, that uh, we have two ways. First, is start working with, uh, is continue working with uh, physical customers, uh, allowing uh, them to like to be uh, more to make their cars more safety because the first priority is uh, safety for them. And second uh, is to work with corporates if we uh, if we improve such regulation. For example, the first idea is uh, more direct. Sh should we improve it uh, in terms of sound, in terms of parameters of sound? And the second, uh, in terms of ecology, if we agree with some institutions uh, of uh, green initiatives in European Union that if corporates use advanced of our system, they get additional um, greenhouse savings, uh, greenhouse credits. So I think uh, this is uh, it will be uh, the major reason to use uh, such a vast system because it's business. So they don't need to pay more if it's not needed. <laughs> yes, sure, sure. I, I agree with you. But uh, uh, my question also to, to guys from Europe. Uh, uh, so um, in Russia, we have such problem that any additional equipment which you want to install to the car, even if it's like a small spoiler or such a difficult or such a uh, progressive system like Tor or maybe some another element, it should be uh, uh, passed through the very complicated procedure in terms of technical regulation, in terms of uh, road police agreement and so on and so on. So what's the situation in Europe right now? So for example, if I have a, for example, I don't know, Tesla or XPeng or GAC or another or Renault Twizy, something else. 
should I uh, agree the installation of such system into the car with some uh, government, uh, um, how to say, organization, or it's uh, more or less uh, flexible in, in, in this way? Uh, I try to answer because we have many clients in Europe <laughs> uh, and uh, they uh, successfully installed our solution and uh, no one uh, no one unhappy with that. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, because regulation is very on the basic level and uh, government don't understand uh, what's good, what's uh, what's bad, and uh, that's it. So uh, I suggest to to finalize it because uh, we have a time. So uh, thank you, Remy, Terry. Thank you, Annika. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye bye. See you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you. Very interesting. Bye. Yeah. Have a good day. Bye.